Hello. I'm delighted to have the chance to talk to you today about one of my favourite, favourite subjects. I'm very sorry that I can't be there in person in Newcastle, but it seemed that the rail strikes were conspiring against me arriving, so it seems safest to stay in, stay in London. So anyway, building a diverse community of botanists through urban botany walks for beginners. So for context, what would be the experience of a beginner at a typical botany field meeting? Might they be challenged with getting to the meeting point if they don't have a car? Could they be worried about toilets and other accessibility issues? Might they be overwhelmed with a long list of unfamiliar plants? Could they be confused by abbreviated Latin names? Will they be baffled by common plants being ignored, long discussions on hybrids or alternative names? And ultimately, will they be exhausted by an all day session? Well, those are all things that I experienced not too long ago when I started coming to Botany Field Meetings. Was my experience unique? I guess probably not. And it may be that your group, uh, it wouldn't be an experience for someone there at all. But the most important thing from my perspective is, do beginners routinely come back to field meetings that they've experienced? How could we do things differently if we wanted to widen and diversify interest in botany and BSB membership? Given that 85% of the UK population and 64% of the Irish population live in urban areas, let's meet them there. So our Skills and Training Committee 2023 Urban Botany Project objectives were to develop guidance for urban botany events for beginners with advice on how to increase accessibility with the help of advocacy groups, which would then complement the guidance which is organising and leading the SBI meetings. The second objective was to pilot urban botany walks for beginners. And then the final objective to encourage local groups to include an urban event for beginners in their 2024 programme. So the first objective to develop guidance. Now I have to confess, I've included some pictures in this talk of my favourite urban plants, as let's think of them as sweetness. So here's some wonderful sticky catch fly, which I found on a roadside in Holyrood Park in Edinburgh. Anyway, back to the guidance. So I'm going to, to share with you some examples of recommendations in the guidance, in this case for planning an event. We recommend that the, you plan for a walk of around one and a half kilometres, uh, maximum 90 minutes, with one co-leader per eight participants to make sure everybody has a chance to interact. And here's a picture of London rocket. So this is a plant which is now quite a rare find, but this one was flowering in Deptford uh, last year on the 1st of December. So the second aspect of the guidance is around improving accessibility. So the recommendation is that the walk starts at a transport hub, perhaps a rail station, and that the a uh, walk leader identifies accessible toilets near the meeting point. So the next plant is musk stalk spill. So this is an interesting plant in southeast London, which when it was very dry in 2020, so during the pandemic, some of the housing at state lawns lost most of their grass. And this was very quickly replaced by musk stalk spill. And in many cases, it still persists and carpets quite a lot of these housing estate lawns to this day. So the next aspect of, of the guidance is around new leaders. Now, perhaps this is controversial, but your local experts, your botany experts, are not necessarily the best guides for beginners. Is this an opportunity to encourage and support intermediate and or younger botanists to lead? 
Here's some Jersey cudweed growing on a wall. It's This is a very frequent pavement plant in South East London. I find it pretty much on every pavement walk I make. The fourth recommendation is around uh, promoting the beginner event with the help of partners. This will help reach new potential botanists and increase diversity. So I've led walks in partnership with Pan UK, Pesticide Action Network, and the London Wildlife Trust, but there are lots of other possible partners. So for example, local allotment societies, perhaps garden clubs, churches, voluntary groups, the list is, is pretty long. And it makes sense to uh, develop a bespoke spotter sheet for participants, which can highlight perhaps the five to 10 common plants they're likely to see in that area and communicate the SBI's details. So on the bottom of both those sheets, which you can't really see, it is writing which explains what the BSBI's website address is. So the second objective was to pilot walks and in principle test out that guidance. Here's some Canadian fleabane, and um, this is in Belfast, um, and it's one of the South American fleabanes you'll be familiar with, which may have been introduced in imported wool shoddy from South America. So piloting walks. So here are a couple of walks that I piloted as a, in partnership with Pesticide Action Network, um, the one on the left in Brixton, the one on the right in Shoreditch. So both walks had 10 plus people. Um, and then a third walk was led in Scunthorpe by James Harding Morris, who's both, both an urban botany project team member, but is also BSBI's country support manager. Planning the walks isn't hard because you're, we're spoiled for choice for plant hunting in urban areas. So we, I talked to participants about looking at pavements, um, exploring tree pits around street trees, looking into brownfield sites, even if you can't actually get into them, it's not safe to get into them. I talk about what I describe as urban meadows, in this case, cemeteries, um, urban scree, which in this case was gravel in a car park and our urban cliffs which are all potential places um, to both show participants uh, what you can find in urban areas and encourage them to look out for. And pilot walks could perhaps be even entertaining. Uh, so one way of encouraging people to get interested in plants is to give them memorable, memorable demonstrations or to tell stories about plants. So perhaps telling the stories of how plants probably arrived in Britain, like this Oxford ragwork, and how they spread once they were here. Um, pelletry of the wall has really nice Velcro-like leaves which stick on clothes. I quite often show walk participants that. We tell the stories of garden plants that have hopped over the garden fence, like this hare's tail grass, or um, plants with which have distinct characteristics like the orange sap of greater celandine. I might point out street trees that seem to be making a bid for freedom like this foxglove tree ceiling which has popped up on a traffic island um, but also plants like ivy leaf toad flax which have interesting characteristics and, and, and sort of lifestyles and the way that it reseeds itself into walls. Those are all the kind of things that, in my experience, people on walks enjoy hearing about and, and will find memorable. And I always ask for feedback. So this is one of the um, aspects of feedback I received recently, which is I enjoyed the pavement plant walk very much and found it instructive and stimulating. Since the walk, I've definitely seen pavement plants in a different light, not just as something to be tidied up. What a fantastic thing to hear after your walk. I and mean, that's what we all hope for, isn't it? So, and a lovely picture of Ruli Saxifrage um, carpeting a, a patch of the Thames Wall in Bermondsey, London. One of my absolute favourite plants. And then finally, so objective three, 
to encourage the inclusion of urban botany walks for beginners in people's botany programs. So is it possible that your local group could please consider including one of these walks for beginners and then let us know how it goes? And the final plant, here it is, water bent, um, once again, very common plant in London, but also in uh, many cities across the UK and in Ireland. And here, for, to find the guidance, here it is on BSBI's website. So if you um, navigate to the field meetings and indoor events page, um, and there you can see highlighted the guidance that I've given you the highlights of. So um, thank you very much. Um, it's been wonderful to have the opportunity to talk about the subject. Um, and I'm so delighted that urban botany is, is a key theme for this conference. <laughs>